This video lesson is on the presidency in action. Why is Article 2 of the Constitution controversial? Article 2, the Constitution's executive article, begins this way. The executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. With these few words, the framers established the presidency. It is no coincidence that the Founding Fathers chose to list the executive branch second in the Constitution, behind the powers that they grant to Congress, which they viewed as the most powerful of the three branches. After the Revolutionary War, many were skeptical of a strong executive, and rightly so. The American colonies had just waged a war against a tyrant who had ruled as a strong executive. The founders were naturally wary of allowing the same thing to happen on their own soil. Thus, they created a rather weak executive office that was empowered to carry out the will of Congress. How has presidential power grown over time? Over the course of American history, the champions of a stronger presidency have almost always prevailed. The nation's increasingly complex social and economic life has also influenced the growth of presidential power. By passing laws and expanding the role of the federal government, Congress has increased presidential power as well. The ability to use the mass media, as every president since Franklin D. Roosevelt has, aids in gathering and holding public attention. How have presidents' own views affected the power of the office? The nature of the presidency depends on how each president views the office and exercises its powers. Some presidents, such as Teddy Roosevelt, have taken a broad view of the powers they inherited. Other presidents, like William Howard Taft, have felt that they cannot exercise any power not specifically granted to them. Where does the president get the power to execute federal laws? As chief executive, the president executes meaning enforces, administers, carries out the provisions of federal law. The oath of office instructs the president to carry out the laws of the land. The other provision is the Constitution's command that he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. What is the ordinance power and where does it come from? The president has the power to issue executive orders. An executive order is a directive, rule, or regulation that has the effect of law. The power to issue these orders, the ordinance power, arises from two sources the Constitution, and Acts of Congress. Although not specifically mentioned in the Constitution, the ordinance power is clearly intended. The size of government has caused Congress to delegate more and more discretion to the president and presidential subordinates. Here is a list of executive orders by president. How does the appointing power work? With Senate consent, the president names most of the top-ranking officers of the federal government, including ambassadors and other diplomats, cabinet members and their top aides, the heads of such independent agencies such as the EPA and NASA, all federal judges, attorneys, and U.S. Marshals. All officers in the armed forces. How has the debate over the removal power evolved? Debate ensued in the first Congress as to whether the president could remove appointees without the consent of the Senate. The view that the president may remove the officials he appoints without Senate consent has prevailed over time. In general, the president may remove any appointees except federal judges. How are treaties made and approved? 
A treaty is a formal agreement between two or more sovereign states. The president, usually through the Secretary of State, negotiates these international agreements. All treaties must pass approval by two-thirds of the members present in a Senate vote. Why and how are executive agreements made? An executive agreement is a pact between the president and the head of a foreign state, or a subordinate. Unlike treaties, executive agreements do not require Senate consent. What purpose does the power of recognition have? The power of recognition is exercised when the president, acting for the United States, acknowledges the legal existence of another sovereign state. The president may show American displeasure with the conduct of another country by asking for the recall of that nation's ambassador or other diplomatic representatives in this country. The official is declared to be a persona non grata, or an unwelcome person. What powers does the president have in the role of commander-in-chief? Many presidents have used the armed forces abroad without a declaration of war. The president's power as commander-in-chief are far greater during a war than they are in normal times. The War Powers Resolution of 1973 limits the president's war-making powers. How are the president's legislative powers an important part of the system of checks and balances? The Constitution provides that the President shall report to Congress on the State of the Union and recommend necessary legislation. This power is often called the message power. All legislation passed by Congress is sent to the President for approval. If the President disapproves of a bill, he can veto it. That veto can be overturned only by a two-thirds vote of both Houses of Congress. A line item veto measure would allow the president to reject specific dollar amounts in spending bills enacted by Congress. In 1996, Congress passed the Line Item Veto Act. However, it was struck down by the Supreme Court in 1998. According to Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution, only the president can call a Congress into special session. What are the president's major judicial powers? The Constitution gives the president the power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. This is seen in Article 2, Section 2, Clause 1. A reprieve is the postponement of the execution of a sentence. A pardon is a legal forgiveness for a crime. These powers of clemency, meaning mercy or leniency, may be used only in cases of federal crimes.